Whiskey prices are soaring at the moment. Buying a beer or whiskey has just become a lot more expensive. Yeah. It's really expensive. Like scotch, more expensive. It's like expensive whiskey and prices are soaring. But many of our favorite treasured whiskies are moving to the overpriced and overrated category. So today I'm talking about the top overpriced, overrated, and overhyped whiskies you probably shouldn't be buying anymore. And make sure you watch to the ends because I'm going to be revealing some affordable alternatives. We're seeing massive uh, jumps in prices through flippers, uh, greedy distributors, and what have you. Pause right there. And yes, that's G Whiskey. And he's got one of the fastest growing Scotch whiskey channels right now. His videos are informative, they're punchy, they're full of wit, but he's also got brutally honest, unfiltered opinion. They have loads of overpriced, no age statement whiskeys. So I thought there's no better person to help pull back the curtain on the top overrated whiskeys that you should probably think twice about before buying. At the point where we're at now, we have a lot of brands that are, they're overcharging and that's not something new for whiskey. They've always been doing that kind of thing. But right after blow to the global financial system, you have big brands coming in and really ramping up their prices. More than ever, we're really feeling the squeeze, the financial like burden of being a whiskey enthusiast. I would argue that now uh, more than ever, we're looking for value alternatives. In this list, I just want to say that we're not saying these whiskies are bad, but just that for the experience you're getting from the whiskey and the price you're paying, it might not be as worth it as it used to be, or might not even be worth it anymore compared to other options out there. All right, so the first one I've got today, I think this is the one that most people are going to be expecting. Everyone's going to expect Springbank to show up here, and rightfully so, it should. Uh, Springbank is a fantastic brand, uh, and it's just, it's it's really, really expensive now. This is a little bit of a unique case uh, on this list because Springbank has not upped the prices for their whiskey, not them as a brand. It wasn't me. We're seeing massive uh, jumps in prices through flippers, greedy distributors, and what have you. That's not something that's on the brand itself. It's kind of a weird situation where they got really popular all of a sudden, and it just seems like we're at a point now where their supply can't match the demand, and that's where you have all these people stepping in and you know grabbing up all the bottles as soon as they get released. Some people keep them to drink them, a lot of others end up being flippers and overcharging the you know, the rest of us for it, which is which is unfortunate. And I think that's a key thing to say is like, I love Springbank. It's one of my absolute favorite whiskeys. One of the biggest things is that you just can't find it. Often when it, uh, we Springbanks arrive in New Zealand, it kind of goes on up on certain kind of chat groups and stuff. They just, they're gone. The question I actually get the most is actually what's an alternative to Springbank? If you're looking for something that's got certain farm quality, you might look to uh, Ben Romick. People often say Ben Romick is the spring bank of space side. Especially if you're looking for say a Springbank 12 car strength, I would go for the Ben Romick car strength. So it's gonna be a bit cheaper and you're probably gonna be able to find it. Affordable, available and genuinely delicious stuff. So there we go, that's a, that's a, that's a really solid alternative. So the next one is another very big brand. I don't know, I wouldn't call it popular among enthusiasts, but I would call it extremely popular. And that's gonna be McAllen. Guys, one of the main negatives of drinking whiskey is it can dehydrate your body and your skin. And even though this is the case, many guys still don't take their skincare seriously. And that's why I'm a big fan of today's sponsor, which is Tiege Hanley. They get it right by making top quality skincare that's also affordable. And they equip you with just the essentials, so it's not overcomplicated. So if you're just getting into skincare, start with the level one system. It's packed with everything you need. A daily face wash, exfoliating scrub, a moisturizer, moisturizer with SPF 20 and a PM moisturizer. And if you get the level two or level three systems, you get the eye cream, which is great for parents like me with very young kids. And this is probably my favorite bit. They give you the super handy guide, which tells you what, when, and how to use all their products. So it's so handy if you're new to using skincare. And they got over 7,000 five-star reviews globally. So lots of people love it. And for those joining the Tiege Handling community, there's lots of great perks, like 20% off regular prices. There's monthly deals you can easily pause or cancel your subscription at any time and for those in the US you get free shipping now because you're part of the first world fam they've whipped up a special deal for you it's 30% off your first box which includes a free gift so if you've been sidelining your skincare like me make sure you click the link in the description and start your skincare journey uh, McCallan is low-hanging fruit as far as the premise of this video goes it 
it's one of the obvious choices, but it is obvious for a reason. McAllen is overpriced. McAllen is over premiumized. A lot of people who want to enjoy McAllen simply because they're whiskey drinkers and they like the profile. I love the McAllen profile. I do think it's a very refined whiskey. They're not interested at this point. They're they're turned off by the price tag. And that's that's understandable. Yeah, they're kind of targeting a much kind of richer market now. And it's not that the whiskey's bad. It's just like when you compare it to other whiskeys at the same price point or even a lot cheaper, it's just not one I'm going to be picking up off the shelf. I mean, it's clever marketing, like on McAllen's side, they're, they're just basically targeting very wealthy people and they put it in a really fancy box and then it's something where you invite all your rich friends around and then you go, oh, look at this. And they go, oh, that's a oh, nice yeah. looking whiskey. That must oh, be a oh. really nice whiskey. <laughs> what is our go-to alternative for McAllen then? My go-to is the Tamdu 12. If I was comparing the McAllen 12, but even just Tamdu as a distillery in general, I think is a really good alternative. Everything's sherry cask matured at Tamdu. I really love the beautiful bottles. They're almost like a decanter and the liquid's really good too. I don't know how calculated it is, but it seems like Tamdu is kind of set up to almost replace McAllen in a lot of ways. McAllen for me has always had this very sort of refined, it's a very elegant whiskey. I mean, it's not the same character, it is a different house style, but they also have that very sort of refined, very elegant profile, which I think, again, really drives home the point that this is a solid alternative to McAllen. And personally speaking, I love it every bit as much. So the next one is unlike McAllen, which has alienated a lot of enthusiasts. We have a whiskey that enthusiasts absolutely love, uh, especially the peat heads, and that's gonna be the Octomores. They're beautiful whiskeys, but they're definitely on the premium side. And their big thing is that they are some of the most heavily peated whiskeys at all, just out there on the market. They are very intense and they come in this beautiful presentation, this beautiful bottle, and there are gonna be some that are better than others. But on the whole, just as a brand, the Octomore brand is expensive and it's overpriced. The price now is just so expensive. It's just not one I'm reaching for anymore. Brooklady has three different lines. We have the standard Brooklady, which is unpeated. We have the Port Charlotte, which is heavily peated. And then we have the Octomore line, which is extremely peated. And what I usually go for as an alternative to these, these Octomores is the Port Charlotte line. More specifically, there's a series out right now called the Cask Exploration Series. And as far as I'm concerned, these are some of the best peated whiskeys out there on the market today. These are still expensive whiskeys. They're still premium whiskeys, and they're not very, very old either, but heavily peated. I think they have some of the finest cast play in the industry. You're paying less, you're getting something that oftentimes is more complex than an Octomore. So for me, that's usually the alternative that I'll suggest to people. And you're not obliged to go for the cask exploration line. For me, it is sort of like the premium alternative, but you can look to stuff like the 10, you can look to stuff like the Isla Bar Barley series, much more affordable. Now we're going to move on to a whiskey that's probably also loved by probably at some point by the majority of whiskey enthusiasts. I feel like everyone at some point just absolutely adored this whiskey. Lagavulin 16 is a heartbreaking one because let's face it, how many people got into peated whiskey through Lagavulin 16? You talk to a lot of people and they'll say this was a big part of my journey. This was a big part of, you know, me sort of getting into the peat scene. It's a legendary whiskey. It's a classic whiskey. And to this day, I still think it's a gorgeous whiskey. It's very sophisticated. The peat is not over the top. It's got this beautiful balance, beautiful shared influence. But yeah, I've seen it shoot up in price. Nowadays, it's kind of like the poster child for a great whiskey that is since become overpriced. And that's the thing about this list. It's not that we don't like the whiskies. It's just that for the money you're paying and the experience you're getting, it's not really becoming that same deal that we once had. In fact, I'll go back, I'll reiterate. Uh, I think the reason this, this list is so frustrating is because we do love these whiskies. These are great whiskies. I've always had a soft spot for Lagavulin 16 and I'm sure so many other people out there have too. And it's a sad one to see go because I don't know that I'll be replacing my bottle. The next whiskey we're jumping on, it's the one that people often come to me who don't drink a lot of whiskey. And they're like, have you tried this one? It's like the best whiskey you can get, but it's very pricey. And I think most enthusiasts are probably not picking this up that much. And what is that whiskey? Yeah, that's the ultimate gift whiskey. That's the whiskey that one of your uncles gifts to the other uncle over Christmas. Uh, and that's gonna be the Johnny Walker Blue. It's not bad whiskey at all. I've had it. I've had it multiple times and it's, it's nice. It's enjoyable. Is it for enthusiasts? 
No, probably not. It's too expensive for what you're getting because you can get single malts with better specs, 46% non-chill filter, natural color for much less than that. It's another one where I struggle to think of anything that could necessarily replace it just because it's got that sort of general scotch profile. It doesn't have any sort of specific character. I've never had it and thought, oh, this is gross. Like I've always enjoyed it, but I've also never sipped it and thought, I want to run out and get a bottle of this right now. Yeah, so it's quite interesting, right? Like in, within Scotch whiskey, a lot of our favorite whiskeys are going up in price. A lot of the ones that have been on this list, but it does seem like there's these two categories, these blended uh, whiskeys rising up that are becoming really good. The other big positive is there's a lot of new distilleries coming up that are coming out at really good specs from the get go. Meanwhile, all like a lot of our favorite whiskeys are just going up and up and up in price and a little bit more out of our reach. So it, it kind of, if it, all things considered, I'm still very excited about the future of whiskey. I am too. Uh, optimism folks, there's no reason to fall into that cynicism trap. We have great quality whiskeys, virtual unknowns that are going to be, you know, fantastic distilleries and, you know, five, 10 years time. We have up and coming blends that are craft produced that are made with a lot more uh, attention to detail and care. Um, there's a lot to be excited about. There's a lot going on right now that, uh, you know, we don't, we can just stop buying these overpriced whiskeys. We don't need them anymore. But if you were to recommend three whiskeys from uh, new distilleries, what would they be? So I think the first one, the easy one is gonna be Arden Merkin. Personally, I think it's one of the best whiskeys out there today. And that's not saying it's one of the best new distilleries out there today. It's just one of the best whiskeys out there today. And they only got started, I think it was like 2014. Arden American is a brand you should be checking out, 100%. The other day I had uh, Tora Vague. Now it was a bit young, but very promising stuff. Beautiful oily texture. It's from the Isle of Skye, where you can also find Talisker. It's the only other distillery on the Isle of Skye, but it's more heavily peated. It's an interesting whiskey. Rasse, Rasse is an interesting one. So check out Rasse. There's a lot of creative stuff happening at Rasse. And that's another reason to be optimistic. New brands are not gonna give us weak specs because they need to establish themselves among connoisseurs before they can get out to the you know, general public. Legacy distilleries, they're happy to sort of get lazy and they're not really pushing anything forward. As time goes on, I think we'll just phase out all the older brands that are overcharging and give us, giving us weaker specs in favor of the Arden Markins, the, the Rasses, you know. The whole landscape might change in a few years. You might have something like your Talisker's, your Lagavulin's where, okay, this particular profile isn't necessarily replaceable, but you'll have something original and unique coming out of Scotland that's, you know, fine, not a replacement, but it's money better spent and it's still a beautiful whiskey. All right, thanks for watching today's video. And before you go, thanks to Teach Hanley for sponsoring it. Make sure you check them out by clicking the links down in the description. And thanks again to Jeff. Make sure you check out his YouTube channel, G Whiskey. I'm a huge fan of it.